Hi, and welcome to the sixth installment of Data Structures in 5 Minutes. Today I'll be talking about binary search trees, which are a very, very important data structure because of, the, uh, because of the properties that we'll see later. It's very powerful, and it's actually very simple when it comes down to it, but it can be applied to many different things. So first of all, a binary search tree is an ordered dictionary, so that means keys. You know how dictionaries have a key and entry pair? Well, keys have an order now. So usually it's easiest to uh, illustrate them as numbers, but of course they don't have to be numbers. All they have to be are comparable objects. And um, for an order dictionary, you can find items close to the key because the keys have a certain order. That's something binary heaps and um, hash tables can't do, for example. But um, a binary search tree can basically do the same thing as hash tables and heaps, but will be much slower. So it's usually um, implemented because of the binary search tree invariant that we'll talk about later. But for now, one important caution is that binary search trees are not necessarily balanced. You'll see that there will be implementations of binary search trees such as splay trees or two, three, four trees that will be perfectly balanced, but this is not the case as we'll see in the runtime discussion. So first, the binary search tree invariant tells us that everything in the left subtree uh, is less than or equal to the root's key. And so you can think of left and less as starting with L. But everything in the right subtree is greater than the root's key. These are the two very important properties of the uh, BST invariant. And finally, uh, probably, uh, well, because of this, Every subtree is also a binary tree. And so if you look at the subtree of 10, while well, 7 is less than 10, well, this subtree is also its own binary tree. And this is very good for recursion. And you'll definitely end up using this a lot. So for now, let's look at how this BST invariant plays out. So our root here is 10. Everything to the left of the root is less than 10. So 3, 4, 7, and 8 are less than 10. On the other hand, everything on this side of 10 is greater, so 25, 12, and 17. You can see that um, <coughs> here it's not necessarily balanced, and this binary search tree is a height of 4, and so it, it's not the most um, pretty binary tree, but this is a good example of what a binary tree can look like. And so now let's talk about some algorithms, uh, some operations that we'll be um, using. The first one's find. And so you use the find by um, following the binary search tree invariant. So for example, if you wanted to find 12, you'd first compare 12 to 10. 12 is greater than 10, so you go to the right subtree. 12 is less than 25, so you go to the left subtree, and there's 12. If you don't find your element, you'll probably hit a null pointer, and that's when you should just return null. The second operation is insert, and insert is very simple. It's just the same as find, but you keep going until you hit a null pointer. And so if, say you wanted to um, insert 13 into this tree. Well, first you compare 13 to 10. 13 is greater than 10, so you go to 25. 13 is... Uh, greater, uh, sorry, less than 25, so you go to the left. 13 is greater than 12 and less than 17, so there's 13. Finally, remove is the most complicated one out of these, and for good reason, because you want to maintain this invariant after you're done. So first what you have to do is locate your entry. Then, if you have no children, it's simple, you're done. So if you just wanted to remove 13, just remove it. Well, for case two, if you have one child, the child moves up. So let's say I wanted to remove the 12. Then I just move 17 up to where 12 was and still maintain the invariant because 17 is less than 25 and greater than 10. But if you had two children, then you'd have to find and replace with either the smallest key that's greater than the remove key or the largest key that's less than the remove key. So this pretty much just translates to um, the the key for this left in the right subtree or the key for this right in the left subtree. So say we wanted to remove a 7, 
then we can either replace it with an 8 or with a 3. Um, because 3 is a, um, sorry, with a 4. 4 is the largest key uh, less than 7, and 8 is the smallest key greater than 7. So your tree can either look like this and maintain the variant, and the invariant, or you can do this and still maintain the invariant. Finally, a brief discussion of runtimes. Remember that the binary search tree can be unbalanced, and so it can easily look like this, in which case all your operations will be, um, in the worst case, theta n, linear time. And if your tree is perfectly balanced, then your operation should take of log n time, because all you need to do is do um, a constant number of passes um, on the binary tree. And finally, this equation is one thing that's very important for binary trees. It's the summation of powers of 2, and it'll just give you this clean result, 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So <coughs> 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus dot 2, 2 to the n will give you 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. I'll leave it up to you to see when this shows up.